What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out 10 of the best extensions for creating curved and organic shapes inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I will link to all of these in the notes down below. In addition, I'm also going to link to a guide that I've created about the best extensions for architectural modeling inside of SketchUp. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out at the link in the notes down below as well. So first off, we're gonna start with a couple of tools that are contained inside of SketchUp. So you don't need to download them anywhere. So the first tool that you can use in order to create shapes like this is called Solid Tools. And basically what Solid Tools does is it's designed to use solid shapes in order to subtract or add from other solid shapes inside of SketchUp. And if you remember, a solid is basically a shape that is fully enclosed with no holes or gaps that doesn't have any kind of internal faces. So it's literally just a shell. So this tool is going to work with any of those kinds of shells. And so let's say, for example, that I wanted to use this object right here and remove object or material from the other object. All right, so there's a tool in here called the subtract tool that'll remove the first solid from the second. So if I was to select this, notice this is a solid group and notice that this one is a solid group as well. But if I was to use the subtract tool like this, notice how you can use this in order to remove material wherever that block was. So even though this got a little bit complex here at the back, it was able to remove all of that material. So solid tools are great for using one shape to subtract material from another. Note that that extension should be built into SketchUp Pro, so you should be able to use that on your PC. Now, if you have an older Make version, um, this was not enabled in the older Make versions, but, but as long as you have the Pro version of SketchUp, you should be able to access it through your extensions. All right, so the second tool is one that we're all fairly familiar with. That's gonna be Sandbox Tools. And what Sandbox Tools does is this is basically a tool set for working with contours and organic shapes inside of SketchUp. And so you can also enable this just by going to your extension manager and finding the option for Sandbox Tools right here. And so that's gonna allow us to do a few different things. Um, for example, it has a tool in here for creating a sandbox, which is basically a grid, but it also has tools in here for things like smoothing. And so what smooth is gonna do is that's gonna give you kind of this big circular brush that you can use in order to adjust an object. And you can adjust the size of that brush by typing in a value and hitting the enter key. But you can see how what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to kind of sculpt this shape. And so notice how if I was to come in here and make my brush a little bit smaller, that I'm going to get a different result than if the brush was bigger. And so this is really good for moving things up and down, um, for, for things like contour editing. So for example, if we were to create another grid over here, see how we can come in here and we can adjust this and change it really quickly. So you can use this for sculpting and other things like that. And there's a lot of other functions in here about this. I have a detailed video about sandbox tools, which I can link to in the notes down below. So those two extensions are built into SketchUp. So now we're gonna get into extensions that you need to download. And again, I will link to all of these in the notes down below. And so the first one I wanna talk about is Curvaloft. So Curvaloft is a tool from Fredo 6 that allows lofting of shapes inside of SketchUp. Basically what that means is that means that it'll take curves like these and it'll create faces between those curves. So that's gonna be called lofting. So there's also a tool in here for skinning, which we'll talk about in a minute. But basically the way this works is there's a couple different tools contained inside of it. One of them is loft by spline. And so what loft by spline is gonna do is it's gonna create a face based on the contours that we have in here. And we can adjust the way that this creates faces between those contours. You can also adjust how complex this face is as well. So you can use this to really quickly create faces. You can also use it to just create the edges um, in here if you didn't wanna create faces. So this is a really um, helpful tool for creating these complex shapes. And so in addition, there's also a tool inside of Curvaloft called the Skin Tool or the Skin Contours Tool. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take a shape that's closed, like this one, and it's gonna create a skin over it. So you can see how you could use this in order to create like a frame 
like this, in order to create a skin. And so that would work for really any shape that's gonna be enclosed. So let's say that we were to copy this and create a more complex shape. Whoops. You can see how you could use this to create a skin over that as well. So this is a great tool for creating those complex skins and shapes. So there's also another option. This option is found in the SketchUp extension warehouse called Soap Skin and Bubble. So we've talked about Soap Skin and Bubble before, but what it does is it takes a frame like this one, so the same one we had over here, and it'll create a skin and you can adjust the number of divisions that are in here by typing in a value. But this one is gonna create a skin based on the frame and then it's gonna apply a pressure to it. And so you can really use this tool in order to create skins over any frame. So let's say we had a frame over here. Well, if we were to try to do this with Curveloft, um, I just don't find the result that we get very interesting. So I'm gonna bring Curveloft back for a second. And if we were to skin this, for example, it just gives us kind of this like simple shape, right? It's just not really a very interesting shape, right? It just kind of follows along this. Um, where if we use Soap, Skin, and Bubble, like this, we're gonna bring this value up. But notice how this gives you a little bit more of a fabric feel in the way that it's brought in here. Well then, you could take this using the rotate tool in copy mode and just create some copies and you can easily create a more complex shape like this using this tool. So there's definitely a place for both of these, but since they're both free tools, they're definitely worth downloading and giving a try. So next, I wanna check out a tool set from TIG, which is also available for free, called Extrusion Tools. And so Extrusion Tools is really designed to help us create faces from edges. There's a number of different tools in here, which I have talked about in detail in the past. I will link to that video in the notes down below, but this allows us to take things like rails or shapes and then extrude them along profiles. So for this one, for example, Notice how I can easily create a shape like this. So this is really good for creating um, these 3D shapes from complex edges. So this is another one I've created. Notice how I had to weld these together into full curves um, for this to work. But if I was to come in here and activate the extrude edges by rails tool, select my rails and then select this profile um, we're gonna say no, we're gonna reverse our faces and we'll say quad faces. But notice how you can come in here and you can create this shape from just a simple profile really easily. So this tool is a great tool set with a lot of interesting things. So not only are there tools in here for extruding edges by rails, there's also, there's also tools in here for extrude edges by vector. So what this does is, you know how with SketchUp's regular with the push-pull tool, you can't push-pull edges, right? So you see these edges in here? Well, I can't extrude them unless they have a thickness. And that means I have to come in here and mess around with the push or the offset tool and other things like that. But with this tool, what you can do is you can just extrude these just by selecting them, clicking, and then moving your mouse. So you can extrude edges really quickly. And then there's also more complex tools like extrude edges by vector to object. And so what those are gonna do is that's gonna extrude edges um, in order to create faces in a direction until they run into something. So let's say for example, that we had a number of columns underneath here. Well, notice how when I extrude this up, I'm getting all these red dots. This is basically the tool figuring out that there's an intersection point on those dots and so it's gonna extrude this until it runs into this face. So I'm gonna say no here, I'm gonna say no here. And if we look at this, you can see how this extruded all of these shapes up until they ran into that face. So this can be a really powerful way to create things that intersect with complex surfaces like this. All right, so, so far we've looked at tools that can create faces that really only have like they don't have any thickness associated with them, right? Well, there's a tool from Fredo 6 that can take these complex faces like these and extrude them out in order to give them thickness. So if you ever need something that's more organic, but you need it to be more than just like an individual plane, this tool is a great fit for that. 
So what this tool does, and I'm gonna make a couple copies of this because there's a couple different things it can do, is basically at its core, what it does is it push pulls multiple faces instead of just one, right? So if I was to come in here and select this and try to use the push pull tool, notice how I get this error that we can't push pull curved or smooth surfaces. And really what that means is that means that this is made up of a bunch of hidden geometry and SketchUp doesn't know how to handle all of those faces at once, right? If I was to like push pull this out, for example, notice how I can get one of these individual triangles, but it doesn't really give us what we want. Well, what this tool does is this can push pull all of those surfaces. So when we activate it, there's multiple different tools in here, but notice how I can mouse over this complex shape, move my mouse out a little bit, and then click We'll notice what that's doing is that's push pulling all of this geometry and then it's like melding it into an individual face. So notice how this takes a little while because I really had too much topology in here. So it's just a lot of faces for this to handle. But now if I look at this, this is now a thickened object. So it doesn't have a face on the bottom side here only because I didn't select the option for thicken. Um, but you can either set this to push pull that face and not leave the original face or you can click on the thicken option and it'll leave the face. But you can use this in order to do things like that or I'm actually gonna create a simpler mesh using sandbox tools real quick. So, so we'll just create something like this. But there's multiple different ways that you can extrude faces like this. So for example, vector push pull is one of my favorites what that one will do and we need to make sure we have project the shape on a plane selected but what that'll do is that'll push pull an object in a direction but then it'll push pull it so that it's flat right here so it'll basically take this and it'll project it to a plane so you can use that to take these uh to take shapes like this one and make flat versions of them all right so sometimes you have a shape it's a little bit more complex and you need to be able to do something with it like bending something along the shape. Well there's a free tool called Flowify that's actually designed to let you take a shape or take an object and then bend it along another shape. And so I will link to a video down below with more details on exactly how this works. But let's say for example that we had some strips in here that needed to be bent along this face. And so what we could do is we could put them all in a group, then we need to make sure this is all individual geometry, but this tool is gonna allow you to take those objects and then use Flowify in order to bend these along this face. So notice how what this is doing is this is basically taking this geometry and slicing it up and putting it along the face right here. So there's a lot of nuance that goes into using this tool. So again, I will link to a starter video on this in the notes down below, but this allows you to do some really cool stuff. And then you could just come in here and just soften your edges like this, and it'll give you this nice smooth shape along this face. All right, so now the, the final tools, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about vertex editing. So vertex editing is more the way that like other programs like Blender um, create shapes. So in SketchUp, for example, really what you do is you extrude faces, right? Like you draw a face and you extrude it like this in order to create shapes in 3D. Well, um, what a lot of other programs do instead is they create vertices. So let's say I was to draw a circle that was six-sided in here, they create their shapes as a series of vertices like this, and then you extrude those in order to create 3D shapes. So Vertex Tools is a tool from TomTom Tom that basically adds a new way of creating and editing these shapes inside of SketchUp. So the way that it works is you just go into vertex mode and then what you get is you get this like 3D gizmo that lets you move things around, right? So you can move things, you can scale them if you decide that you wanna do that. You can also select vertices and then extrude them. So if I hold the control key and drag this up, notice how what this is doing is this is editing this or creating this based on the vertices, right? So instead of me extruding the faces, I'm able to extrude this upward using the vertices 
in order to create this object. And so this gives you a lot of really interesting options for different things that you can create. So you can use this in order to model using those vertices rather than the faces. And so the cool thing about this is this has things like a fall off select mode. So if we were to create a sandbox real quick, like this, where with sandbox tools, right, you have like, you have a little bit of control over the way things kind of fall off, but with the vertex tools, you really have a lot more control over your selections and other things like that. So for example, you can come in here and you can select a series of vertices. So using either the square tool or the circle tool like this, but then you can also type in a value to adjust the soft selection radius. So if I type in a value of 10 feet, or let's say maybe 40 feet, Notice how you're getting these colors in here. And what this is showing you is this is showing you that this is your selection and then this is the fall off circle of where the influence is gonna go. So if I was to click and drag this up, notice how I get a really pronounced change right here, but then that really kind of falls off over here. So you can use this to create more like organic or other kinds of shapes. And so then in addition, once you start modeling this way, um, what you start doing is you start modeling things using quads, right? So quads are basically four-sided geometry. So a lot of the time inside of SketchUp, if we were to turn on our hidden geometry, notice how these faces are actually made up of three-sided shapes. So if I was to click in here, the actual faces are made up of tries, right? And so that's just the default way that SketchUp creates geometry. But there's some things that don't really work super well, like material mapping with tries that mathematically speaking work a lot better with quads. And so there's actually a tool set from TomTom Tom that's also available for free called Quad Face Tools. What Quad Face Tools does is it gives you a number of mesh editing options that you can use for quad geometry. So for example, you can use this to really quickly select edges. So for example, if I was to click in here and select these edges like this, I can use the loop select tool in order to select the loops of that geometry. Well then, I could do something like using vertex tools in order to extrude those outward, or you might do that with faces and joint push-pull instead. And so I could come in here and select a couple of these, and then use the select loop tool in order to select the faces all the way around. Then I could activate something like the joint push-pull tool, and I could push-pull these outwards in order to give this thickness. So notice how I can push pull this outward. So if we were creating like a barrel or something like that, I could use the quad face tools selection tools in order to select things quickly. And then a tool like joint push pull in order to extrude them out. So it's a completely different kind of modeling, but it allows you to do things like that really quickly. All right, and then finally, sub D is a subdivision tool from TomTom Tom that allows you to subdivide surfaces to make them smoother. So once you start modeling with quads, what happens is this tool allows you to subdivide these. And what it's doing, if we look at our hidden geometry, is it's going through and it's dividing up this geometry um, in order to make things smoother. And so you can adjust how much or how little it does this, but notice how these shapes get smoother as this happens. So what this does is this allows you to create really complex shapes with really simple geometry. So if we were to take a shape like this one, for example, um, which isn't perfect quads, but that's okay. Um, if we were to take this object and then we were to subdivide it like this, notice how you're able to get a much smoother result in here. And so once you start coupling this with something like uh, vertex tools or something like that, you can start creating really complex shapes inside of SketchUp. So leave a comment down below. Let me know which one is your favorite extension. In addition, I have linked to videos about all of these in the notes down below so you can learn how to use them. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.